social stigma and the rise of leprosy cases in the Marshall Islands. Decolonization official offers views on Chuk independence movement. And plenty of announcements here on the Micronesian News Broadcast. Hey, today is Friday. Aloha Friday. I know it's not Hawaii, but you know, you know that you know that term. Aloha Friday, no work till Monday. Do 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 do. Uh, it is March 29, 2019, and in our very first story, this comes to us from the Interpress Service, and also an article from Radio New Zealand. In the Marshall Islands, it is believed that 50 to 80 cases of leprosy pop up every year, and for a population of around 60,000 people, that's a hell of a lot of people. According to the World Health Organization, if 1 in 10,000 people are affected by leprosy, then it should be a disease not considered eliminated. You know, one would think that no cases at all equals total elimination, but you know, I don't understand. You know, that's just the standards of the World Health Organization. According to Meritha Pearson, a nurse at the Leprosy Clinic of Madurell, social stigma is what keeps people from seeking treatment for leprosy, a disease that can be cured in this day and age. This is not something new. As far back as 2013, the Ministry of Health for the RMI has found that 165 people are being treated for leprosy. That's 31 people per 10,000, which is 30 times more than the WHO standards. And what they also found was that 536 cases per 100,000 people was founded by the World Health Organization in the RMI, wrecking, making it the ninth highest of leprosy cases in the world and number one in the Pacific region for leprosy. It was also found that Kiribati, FSM, and the RMI are unable to meet this target quota. And it should be noted that this only reflects patients who actually reported themselves, and it could be rising or be getting higher simply because of those who did not report themselves. It has been found that there are around 30 atolls that are considered hotspots for leprosy in the Marshall Islands. These include, some include Kwajalein, Ailin Lablap, Mili, Arno, Wotje, and Iban. According to Ken Jetton of the RMI Department of Public Health, that's what he said. And according to Pearson, the nurse I mentioned earlier, people don't want to talk about it or other people to find about their, their disease for fear of alienation. If that's the case, leprosy might take a long time to disappear from the RMI. What do you think? It is said, Pearson said that you know, despite the screening and follow up activity, activity, social stigma, especially towards the female leprosy patients, might take longer than expected to fade away. This is because the island nation is still largely ignorant to the fact that leprosy is a curable disease. She also says, patience, therefore, is the key. We must be patient and also have empathy for those who hide their diseases from others. They are vulnerable and scared of losing their dignity and we need to understand this, says the nurse. What do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And this story comes to us from the Pacific News Center. Hello. Um, if you remember a couple episodes back, we talked about the Chuka Independence Movement. It's been a movement that's been around for several years. And recently, Melvin Juan Pat Borja, who sits on the Commission of Decolonization, shared his perspective on troop secession plans and its implication to Guam's own self-determination efforts. According to this guy, he said, it is important for us to take note of this stance. However, I think we are not pursuing our self-determination and decolonization indirectly through the federal government, through the United States. This vehicle is really created for us to be the United Nations in an international arena." End quote. Remember, the Chuk Independence Referendum vote was supposed to was supposed to happen this year during the March 5th elections. But however, the government announced that it has, it has been postponed because of uh, Chuk state legislator de decided to postpone it. And then now the independence movement wants to take the Chuk le state legislature to court. Also, the guys, uh, Pat Borja, said the United Nations passed General Assembly Resolution 1541 which details the process for Guam's self-determination process. There are three options for Guam if they so decide to do so. Full integration or statehood, independence, and free association, just like us in the FAS. 
Mon Pat Borja pointed out that the status voted on by the people may not necessarily mirror existing models. He stressed the importance of going through the proper process as laid out by the UN. We are pursuing this through the international process, not through a federal process. I would argue that it's almost irrelevant what the United States wants. If you remember, if you remember some time back, Robert Riley, the U.S. ambassador to the FSM, when he found out about this whole entire Chuk State political status movement, warned the citizens of Chuk of the potential uh, possibilities of what could happen if they were to secede from the FSM. He went to say the current Compact of Free Association was with the Federated States of Micronesia and therefore does not cover a separate entity of Chuk. That's a legal distinction that is non-negotiable. So in other words, the compact is only for the FSM and it will never be for Chuk. Hmm. And it should be reminded that Chuk is part of the compact because it's part of the FSM. Riley also added there's no bad intent involved here or malevolent intent. It's just that the compact is with the FSM and in order for there to be another compact with Chuk, that would, there, there would have to be a separate compact negotiated. That unfortunately will never happen. I mean, what do you guys think? A long time ago, we were united. Bonpe, Chuk, Kastrai, Yap, Saipan, Armai, Palau. Guam was already on, on its own, it was on America. Yet, now some in Guam want independence, or at least some leeway in determining their own destiny. Just like our brothers and sisters in the Chuk independence movement. What do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Now, here are some very important and announcements. And here are the announcements. Now, this is for all you sticky, icky lovers out there. When I mean sticky, icky, I mean you marijuana people. Okay, so the bill to legalize recreational marijuana was passed in Guam Senate with an 8 to 7 vote. However, don't lit those blunts just yet. The governor is supposed to sign off to make it official, and then we must wait for the proper administrative bodies and policies to put it into place before you can blaze that blunt and lit it like a chimney. Lit it like a chimney. So hold off on the blunts, okay? And another next announcement. Palau Asia Pacific Air announced that it will be servicing flights between Taoyuan, which is Taiwan, and Saipan from June 5th. Every Monday, Saturday, and Wednesday, every two weeks, providing six day and five day tour packages. The service will be concluded in October when summer flight schedule ends. It is expected that around 10,000 tourists will visit CNMI this summer. Well, hot damn, I wish they would do that here in the FSM. And in our last announcement, President Christian recently asked Dr. Shirai Yoshihasu to be FSM's honorary consul in the Kinki region, Japan. The Dr. Y the Dr. Shirai previously previously bestowed Christian, President Christian, with an honorary doctorate, doctorate in philosophy degree. Awesome. Yoshihasu agreed, and there are talks of programs, education programs between the two countries. So, hooray to both of us, to both countries. Amen, hallelujah. And, thank you for tuning in. This are the announcements. And now, here is my brother with the weather report for Hey guys, tomorrow. this is Norman, and this is the weather for tomorrow. 28 degrees Celsius high during the day, and 23 degrees Celsius low during the night. With showers with light winds, and 60% chance of precipitation, and 75% of humidity. Sunrise will be at 6.26 a.m. and sunset will be at 6.36 p.m. East Northeast winds 15 to 20 knots and seas will be at 7 to 8 Thanks feet for high. joining into the Micronesian tuning into the Micronesian News broadcast. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tune in every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Until next time, see you later.